Hey guys, today we're back with my 2022 Subaru BRZ. I just took this on a road trip. I went out to Road America for the Midwest Automotive Media Association Spring Rally, something that I do on an annual basis. Filmed a bunch of cars, put about 900 miles on this BRZ, and I wanted to give you guys some road trip driving impressions. Fuel economy, ride comfort. Uh, what's this thing like on a long distance highway trip? So let's get into it. We'll talk about it in this video. I have some thoughts to share compared to my previous generation BRZ, my 2014 that I owned for six years. Well, it's still pretty filthy. I haven't really cleaned it up since I got back last night, but uh, it was a pretty solid road trip vehicle. First, let's talk fuel economy. Fuel prices are crazy these days, and uh, it's an important factor in any vehicle that we own, I think. It's just probably one of the highest expenses that we have in a vehicle these days. So I use this app to track all of my fuel consumption. It's called Fuely. Not a sponsored app, but uh, I wish they would sponsor me someday. But I found it to be super useful over the years. I've tracked my 850R, my old BRZ, my GX460, and of course, I've been tracking this new BRZ. So on the highway, I was going at a relatively quick pace uh, there. I averaged 29 and a half miles to the gallon. That's a 10.369 gallon fill up. And then I had about uh, a little bit less than half a tank, uh, taking a little bit easier, a lot of 60 mile an hour roads. I averaged 31.8 through Wisconsin, which uh, is pretty impressive. And then on the way home, again, hauling ass <laughs> through Chicago, another 29 and a half MPG tank. So another 10 gallon tank cost about $51 to fill up. Um, premium unleaded fuel only. Considering that the BRZ premium manual is rated for 20 miles a gallon in the city and 27 on the highway, I'm pretty pleased with those numbers. I think that's uh, a little bit of a conservative estimate from the EPA on this car's actual real world fuel economy. In the on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, I've been averaging anywhere between 26 to 28 miles a gallon in a city highway mix. So glad to see that on a road trip you can get close to or above 30 miles to the gallon depending on how heavy your foot is. All right, let's take this out on the road. We'll do some highway driving and talk about what this was like to drive the 856 miles to Road America and back. Whole trip took a little bit under 13 hours. My average speed was 66 miles per hour. We're on the stock Michelin Primacies, 215, 45, R17s. Tire pressures were inflated to about 37, 38 PSI warm. So a little bit over placard, but uh, I set them to be about 35 PSI cold. So uh, pretty standard tire pressures. Ride quality was excellent. Uh, I've got to really commend Subaru on the suspension tuning with this BRZ. It is super soft, super comfortable. Um, I dialed out a lot of the understeer that I had problems with initially in this car, added about a degree and a half of negative camber to the front tires, and no tram lining, no issues on the highway there. Got a solid alignment from a local shop, and uh, the car was actually really nice to drive on the highway. It was very stable. steering in this BRZ is quite a bit lighter than the previous generation and at first I thought that might be a little bit of an issue on a longer road trip but it actually turned out to be a little bit more easy to drive than I thought it would be. Uh, it wasn't as taxing to keep this car on the road with one hand or centered between the lines. It was actually a really nice and pleasant uh, long distance cruiser. We'll get on the highway here in a little bit and I'll show you what it sounds like at speed. So 
So really one of my only complaints about this new BRZ is it seems like these primacies have quite a bit more impact and noise over expansion joints than the previous generation car did. I don't know if they changed the compound around a little bit. It definitely feels like a grippier tire than the previous generation car. And that may also just be that inherently Subaru added more grip to the rear end of this new BRZ and uh, that's what's providing extra traction. So not 100% sure on compound changes or tire changes with the new Primacy tire, but uh, it is a little bit loud on the highway. You can hear there's a little bit of reverberation over expansion joints. It's a little bit echoey. Not something that I experienced on the winter tires that I mounted when I first bought this car. So it was actually pretty quiet on the highway. I will say wind noise and road noise is a little bit less in this car. And it all depends on what type of pavement that you're driving on. If you're on concrete like we're on right now, it's definitely a lot louder. If you're on just regular blacktop asphalt, it's noticeably quieter. And of course, once you leave Michigan, the road quality improves substantially and uh, you realize just how bad we have it here in Metro Detroit. So I will say through construction zones, through really bumpy, rutted, nasty spots uh, that were really rough, this car did phenomenally well. Um, I'm really glad I have the 17s just for a little bit of extra sidewall cushion. The 18 inch Michelin Pilot Sport 4s on these BRZs are a little bit thin for my comfort level on Michigan roads and road trips just because if you hit a pothole you're kind of the risk of having a bent or damaged wheel is pretty high. And those Pilot Sport 4s are significantly louder than these Primacies. So something else to consider and factor in in your tire buying decisions. I found that with a lot of Michelin performance tires, the Pilot Sport 4, the Pilot Sport 4S, these Primacies on this BRZ, they're really loud uh, on the highway and they have a lot of NVH that's transmitted into the cabin no matter what I'm driving, whether it's a Lexus RCF or a BRZ or any of their other products um, that they specifically build tires for. So kind of a disappointment there with Michelin. I will probably end up swapping these out at some point for maybe a set of Bridgestone Potenza RE980 Pluses. Uh, I think that would be a really nice daily driver tire that could maybe handle a little bit of snow winter driving if I needed to without a set of dedicated winters in those late winter months or uh, early fall months before I've got the winter tires mounted. All right, so we're about to transition from concrete to asphalt. Here we are, you can hear there's just a little bit less tire noise, which is nice. I love the acceleration you get out of this BRZ in sixth gear. There is so much more torque here. Passing cars, didn't really have to downshift that often. Um, it's a very easy car to make passes and make moves on on the highway, which I appreciate. Definitely a big improvement from the previous generation where under 5,000 RPM, nobody was really home. You always had to be shifting into fifth or fourth to make a significant pass. In this, I have plenty of torque and speed. Visibility. Visibility in these cars has always been really good. Uh, personally, I like my little fisheye blind spot mirrors. I think those do a really nice job of being able to tell me quickly whether there's a vehicle in my blind spot or not. Uh, if you're in traffic and you know more congested areas, that's really useful. My premium car does not come with blind spot monitoring. That is something I'm definitely missing out on. But honestly, I trust these fisheye mirrors more than I would a light that's on or not off uh, telling me whether someone's in my blind spot. Seats. These are really comfortable seats. The previous generation BRZ had comfortable seats for long road trips and so does this new generation. This just has a little bit more bolstering than the previous gen. Uh, same seat pretty much, same padding, and I was very comfortable. I did six hours, a little over six hours of driving one way to Road America, and I only stopped once for fuel, so I did two three hour stints. I felt great by the end of it. No back pain, no issues, uh, just a little bit tired from uh, all the driving sound system and Apple CarPlay. Infotainment, Apple CarPlay disconnected a few times. I'd say about three or four times total throughout the whole trip. Uh, I did swap out the cable to a brand new cable from Apple. I was using a slightly older Apple branded cable and it seems to be a little bit more reliable. 
not a huge deal. You just disconnect your phone, plug it back in, and we're back up and running. But something that may be a little bit of an issue with these newer infotainments, maybe there's a TSB that will come out for it in the future. If it gets worse or persists as an issue, I'm definitely going to bring it up uh, as a warranty claim with Subaru. Let's talk about night driving. Not something we've discussed a ton with this new BRZ. One of my favorite features with this car is they retained the physical dimmer switch controls. You get out in the dark at night, nobody's around, it's just you and headlights and probably some deer on the road, and you can dim these gauges to be pretty much as dark as you would ever want them while still being able to see them and read them clearly, but it really improves your visibility with the rest of the road and your sight lines. Headlights on this car are actually pretty good. I, I was driving back last night in the rain, so it's kind of difficult to gauge headlight quality, but uh, in my opinion, they're actually pretty bright for a vehicle at this price point. I'm very impressed with the illumination that they have at night, and in the rain last night, I was able to see pretty well. So, good on Subaru for that. I believe these are pretty much the same headlamps that we have in the limited BRZ, but they just don't rotate. So, not a huge deal. Uh, you just get a little bit less visibility around corners with them. I actually haven't driven it as much as I anticipated. I only have 2,400 miles on this, and I bought it back in March. So, you know, some other people out there, they've got five, 6,000 miles on their new GR86s, their new BRZs. I have mostly just been driving press cars uh, these last couple months. So it was good to get some miles and some time behind the wheel on this. It's definitely a solid road trip car. I really like the fact that it's pretty fuel efficient. It's reasonably comfortable for a sports car. Uh, I have done 3,000 mile road trips in my previous gen BRZ and it was awesome. It was really nice to just experience a variety of roads in the car. On the highway it was great. It was relatively fuel efficient. It was super comfortable. Pretty spacious too. You can fit a lot of gear in these cars between the back seats and the trunk space. Um, plenty of room for two people and all of their stuff. And I would say this is a fantastic little road trip car. like how soft the suspension is tuned in this new car. It is almost Camry-like. That's that's kind of the, uh, it, just, it just feels like a normal car. It doesn't feel overly stiff like the previous generation did initially at some points, uh, especially the FRS. I think the GR86 is almost a little bit too much on the stiff side, especially in the winter when shock fluid has a higher viscosity rate. And, um, this BRZ really does strike a really nice balance between ride quality and handling. At first, I was pretty uh, pretty set on getting a GR86. When I couldn't find one, I was a little bit bummed that I could only get a BRZ. But for the ride and improved uh, just overall comfort in this car, I'm actually really grateful that I did get this BRZ premium. So between this, the 17-inch wheels, kind of can't go wrong. Hopefully that gives you some useful information on what the BRZ is like to drive on a long distance road trip. Uh, again, while it's fresh in my eye, just having come back from Road America, I figured I'd do a quick video and give you guys some thoughts on what it was like 
uh, taking this up to Wisconsin and back. So anyway, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.